How many know Jesus is real? Good morning, everybody. How many know Jesus is real on this morning? Come on. Come on, say, Jesus is real. Come on, clap those hands like you love them. Say, say, Jesus is real. Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. Yes, sir. Listen. Sometimes when I'm feeling down, no one around, Jesus comes along and he makes me so. Say, Jesus is real. Jesus is real. Come say, Jesus is real. Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real. Come on, clap those hands like it's Sunday. Come on. Say, Jesus is real. Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real. Tell me. Verse 2. Come on. Say, sometimes when I'm feeling down, no one around, Jesus is a friend that I, I have found. Oh, I know. I know. Oh, Say, Jesus is real. Jesus is real. Come on, clap those hands right there. Come on, clap those hands like you love them. Come on, listen, say, everybody say, he's real. He's real. Oh, yes, he's real. Oh, yes, he's real. Say, he's real. he's real. Oh, yes, he's real. Oh, yes, he's real. I tried him. He's real. I tried him, yeah. Oh, yes, he's real. He's real. He's real. Oh, yes, 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 he's real. Say for I know. Say for I know. Say for I know. Right there. Say Jesus. Jesus is real. Oh! 
Somebody say, oh, oh, how he loves you. How he loves if you can, oh, worship, worship on your feet. Oh, how he loves us. Say, how he loves. How he loves us. Come on, let's, come on, let's, let's take it up. Say, oh. Just let that, just let that minister to you say, for the Bible, for the Bible, it tells, it tells, me so, me so.
Amen, 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 amen. Oh, how he loves us. I love that. Oh, how he loves us. I don't know about you, but I love him right back. Oh, how he loves us. John said, for God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. And at first, when Jesus is real, I don't have to ask nobody. I don't have to inquire as to what people think about it. I know that he's real. Sister Lisa, Brother EJ, God bless you. Amen. Amen. I, I feel like we're in church already. Yeah. Amen. Oh, how he loves us. Yeah. Amen. We're so grateful to be here. We bless God today with all that we are worth. I'm kind of like, if I'm going to be in the game, I'm going to be in the game. So I bless the Lord with all my heart and soul and I commit all that I'm worth to him. And I know that he's faithful to be a watch over my soul. Uh, we're grateful today, uh, we're kind of dragging a little bit. They kept us up late last night watching a movie. We had our movie night last night. Uh, uh, <laughs> Brother Keith, Brother Phil did a great job. Uh, we're grateful to the Hudlands, amen, for all they did, amen. We, we got some good people who are willing to serve. Amen. A lot of people are willing to be served, but everybody not willing to serve. And I thank God for those who are willing to serve. Amen. We had a good fellowship. The last year or so, we haven't had, had much fellowship. You know, and, and, and Zoom is, is good, and, and streaming is good, but it don't replace fellowship. Amen. So it's time for the church to get back together. A couple of announcements. Uh, this afternoon, I think it's at 3 o'clock, the uh, Freedom Fund Gala. Uh, there's a Zoom address link that you can get. Uh, and if you want that, uh, contact Sister Deborah Fitch. She has it for you. She'll get it to you. And... Uh, this year, again, the, the SAC program, S-A-K, Serving Area Kids, will be launched. Uh, that's a summer lunch program with uh, Emmanuel Methodist Church uh, starting Monday, June 7th. That's tomorrow, right? That's tomorrow. Uh, uh, it'll go through August 23rd. Uh, Mount Joy uh, serves uh, on June 14th and July 26, which means that we are responsible for supplying the things. Uh, it, it runs from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, we are taking a part in this. We will be responsible for donating granola bars, so buy the bars and bring them in. Amen. If you have any questions, contact Deborah Pitts at 977-9783. Amen, amen. So we are, we are looking forward to that. And we, we got a part to play. Uh, God has blessed us so much just to be here. Uh, I think we had our first 90 degree day of the day. So summertime is here and uh, uh, we're healthy enough to enjoy it. And uh, God has spared us. Uh, and, and there's still there's still some, we still need to be careful. We're, we're still uh, sanitizing every week. We still got the windows cracked. We still are, are doing all the things that we need to do. You still got to wear your mask. But uh, we're not locked up like we used to be. And I thank God for that. Uh, many people and many nations are. And I just thank God for this, just that, that good praise this morning. Amen. Yeah. Reminding us how God loves us. Amen. And you know, we take it for granted sometimes. But his great love for us. Not a little love, but great love for us yeah, yeah. is what allowed us to be here today. So uh, let's start off with, with prayer uh, and telling him about our needs and thanking him for what we have. Uh, God has blessed us so much. Uh, Father God, we come in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for this day. 
a day that we've not seen before, a day, Lord, that we couldn't claim because we've been good enough. But, Lord, your grace and your mercy have allowed us to be here. And before we ask you for anything today, Lord, we say thank you. We bless you, Father, the best that we know how. From the depths of our souls, we thank you. And Father, we just pray for those who have come out today. Father, we pray for those who would come if they could. We pray for those who are streaming with us right now. That your blessings, Lord, might go through. I don't know what the lines are that take the, uh, the, the live feed, Lord, but bless your people today. We know you love us, Lord, and we love you right back. And Father, that those who need, that those, Lord, who are sick right now, we pray for healing. There are those who are in trouble right now, dear Lord, and, and man has turned their back, but we face them, dear Lord, and pray for mercy. We pray for our children, that you would bless them, that you would direct them, that you would touch their hearts, Father, that they would hear you even when they can't hear us. Pray for our grandchildren, our brothers, and our sisters, dear Lord. There are, uh, there are many, dear Lord, who are in need today. We pray for every church door that's open in your name. We pray for the energy and the desire of your people, Lord, to come back to church and worship and fellowship together. We pray, Father, for a nation that looks down on people like me and you. And, Lord, we pray that you would bless us, that you would uh, uh, allow us, Lord, to know what to do and how to do it, dear Lord, to bring equality. Let it be known that our lives matter. Let it be known that all lives matter, Lord. Let it be known that we are your children, and, 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 and to mistreat your children, dear Lord, is a dangerous thing to be. Bless our families, our homes, our husbands, our wives, our sons, our daughters. We just thank you, Father, for all of you. Bless your word that your word might bless your people. And, Lord, we be careful to give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory. For it belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen and thank God. Amen. We're grateful to see you today here. We're going to try to finish up what we started last week talking about struggles. We invite you to turn now. Uh, we looked at Romans 6, 7, and 8. I don't know if we're going to get through all that today or not, but I'm going to read chapter 6, verses 11 through 14. I'm going to read chapter 7, verses 8 through 11. But know that you need to be reading 6, 7, and 8. And that ought to be familiar because we, we've been studying that in Sunday school, I think. Amen. Amen. Uh, Romans 6 says, uh, I'm reading chapter 11, likewise you also, and this is a country word here, I think, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Romans 7, 8 through 11 says, but sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. I was alive once without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment, which was to bring life, I found to bring death. 
For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it killed me. Lastly, in chapter 7, I'm going to read 15, 18, and 19. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will do, that I do not practice. You ever say, practice what you preach? Mm -hmm. That I do not practice, but what I hate, that I do. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform it, what's good, I do not find. For the good that I will do, I do not. But the evil that I will not do, that I practice. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. That's, that's, some, that's some challenging stuff, huh? Struggle two. Different kind of struggle. Uh, uh, last week we talked about one of the most prominent men in the Bible, Jacob, the son of promise, the son of Isaac, who was the son born to Abraham and Sarah when he was 100 and she was 90. They say when kids are born to old parents, they come out looking a little old. We use Jacob to introduce the unpleasant reality of the struggles that we have in our lives. Jacob helped us to a good start in the topic. But it's easy to, to, to get so caught up in the example or the illustration, we do that, that you miss the weight of the concept that's being taught. And, and we, 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 we learn some stuff about Jacob, but what do we really, really learn about struggles? Today we're going to set Jacob aside and all his stuff and going to look at just struggles. Now, hopefully everybody understands that it is not just Jacob who struggled. We see people going through stuff and we act like we ain't never been through nothing. But it wasn't just Jacob who struggles. You and I also have struggles. And, 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 and our struggles don't end when we become Christians. You know, that, that they lie to people sometimes in church. <laughs> if you come and join the church and, uh, you know, all your trouble will be over. Anybody hear that? <laughs> sometimes it seems that way, huh? I, I'm reminded of a question that was asked a few years ago uh, during our Wednesday night Bible study. I, I shared it before, but it fits here. Uh, I'm not going to tell the guy. I, I, but one of our fairly newly ordained deacons asked a very pertinent and interesting question. And I'm not real sure exactly what the topic was at the time, but uh, the question fit the subject. And he said, are we still going to be tempted when we get to heaven? Anybody ever thought about that? And I, I, I've been studying and teaching for a lot of years, and, uh, but I had never before heard that. And it took me a few minutes to consider the answer. I, I'm not sure if I answered that night. I could be wrong, but my translation of the question is, I'm saved. I'm, I'm committed to God. Yeah. I, I'm dedicated to the church. But I'm still tempted. And I find myself struggling sometimes because of the temptation. Most of us who've been around for a while don't even admit to being tempted or to struggling. We, we act like we're already there. And y'all need to get where I am. But for the sake of, of new Christians, uh, uh, temptations do come. Even when you're saved and, and sanctified, uh, Holy Ghost-filled people, uh, 
as we go through our, our, our Christian lives, uh, potholes appear in the road. And I don't know about uh, uh, little girls, but little boys are often tempted to jump in the mud. Huh? We don't admit it to the world, but we're sometimes tempted. In fact, as long as we live on this earth, we're going to have temptations and struggles. And in the news just last week, I heard him talking about a professional tennis player, Naomi Osaka. Did I say it right? Yes. Who dropped out of the French Open, and they paid him big money especially if they can win. And all the money that she could make because she was struggling with depression. Is it possible to be overcome with the mental pressures of life? Yeah. Now, we don't all struggle with the same thing, but we all struggle. For some of us, it's depression or Another mental issue, others it might be alcohol or drugs. Some of us search out uh, and, and discuss other people's business. Uh, they call it gossiping. Uh, some of us are, are selfish or, or, or self-centered. Some of us are, are mean and a little, you know, evil, you know. In church, and the list goes on and on and on of, of the different struggles that we have. And, and we, we, now we all see our struggles as not a big deal. But there's no excuse for your shortcomings. But all of those things are, are struggles that can plague us and, and cause us to be pulled off course, off the course God places on. In fact, you'd be surprised uh, to know how many of those uh, uh, around you, look around you, are going through struggles. We got our, our nice clothes on, and we got uh, our, our hair combed, and uh, well, unless you twist it now, but uh, and I, I got our, our faces straight, you know, and uh, but 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 many of us are still behind all that dress up, struggling. Right. Now we hide it well, and we got to because our culture puts down and destroys anyone uh, they see struggling. But in spite of that. All of us struggle with stuff in our lives. All of us. Now, you, you're not going to like this, but I, I, I got to share it anyway. It's not always because of the devil that we struggle. We blame it on him. Our, our problems are not, are not always without. We spend a lot of time talking about what they do to us. But a lot of the time, it's what we do to us. Sometimes our, our struggles come from within. You ever hear somebody say, well, uh, they're their own worst enemy? All Satan can do is speak to what is in us. If there's nothing within us to identify with what he's saying, it won't be a problem. It, we, we all look like we're holy and pure right down to the bone, but all of us still have some stuff down in us that we have to struggle with. And it's only with the help of and the power of the Holy Spirit that we can be victorious. Now, this is not the lesson for today, but I, I, I got to call this out. Uh, since we have these tendencies and urges down within us that cause us to struggle, we should not judge others so harshly because of their struggles. Just because they ain't struggling with the same thing we're struggling with. You see, in our mind, our, our, our issues are not significant, but theirs are. But we need to remember that God promises to judge us with the same judgment that we use to judge others. In other words, those who give mercy. Listen to me now. God said this. Those who give mercy get mercy. 
And those who don't give mercy to others won't get it from God. I'm going to say it again. Those who give mercy get mercy. And those who don't give mercy to others won't get it from God. So we need to back off of our condemnation of other people. Now, and they probably got some issues. But he who is without sin, let him throw the first stone. Most of us keep our struggles and our issues locked up behind tight lips because we're still afraid that if anyone knew it, they wouldn't accept us like we don't accept others. Uh, you don't have to give the details, but I, I need everybody, and, and this is good therapy for us. I need everybody here and everybody streaming to let the secret out and go ahead and admit that you struggle. Come on, or write it in the chat if you're streaming. I struggle. Let that be settled. I know you over there and you, but I struggle. That's the first point. We struggle. Yes. On our best days, we struggle. And, and, and every day in our best day. The second point I want to make is, 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 is why we struggle. Uh, Paul does a good job in, in, in the sixth, seventh, and eighth chapters of, of Romans uh, uh, explaining all of this. Uh, in one sense, people who are not Christians don't have the same, and Glenn said it earlier, uh, they don't have the same trouble that Christians have because they only have one nature. And although the consequences for their choices and lifestyles are, are very unpleasant, they don't have the inner disagreement that people of faith have to deal with. Let me elaborate. In chapter 5, uh, uh, verse 8, I think Paul tells us that God demonstrates his love toward us, and we sang about it. Oh, how he loves us. But Paul tells us that God demonstrates his love toward us and that while we were still sinners, nobody was a saint when they got saved. And many of us, after we get saved, we're still not so much a saint. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And that because of his shed blood, we are saved from the consequences of our sin. So in spite of our struggles, God saves us. In spite of the chinks in our armor, God saves us. In spite of the, of the fact that we talk too much about other people's business, God saves us. Then chapter 6 begins with a question. Since we are off the hook for our sins, now, they're not free. God, Christ had to pay for them. And since we are delivered by God's grace, Paul begins with this question. Shall we stay like that? Shall we continue in sin in order to allow grace to shine? Should I keep acting like I'm acting? Remember last week we talked about uh, Jacob in a wrestling match and, 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 and uh, the angel said, uh, your name will no longer be Jacob, the trickster. The angel changed who he was. And, 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 and God is out to change who we are. Now, we act like we're not that anyway, but God is out to make it real. And the answer is no. We have died to sin, and we are no longer serve it. Now, that's deceiving. Let me unpack it a little bit. The first step in the unpacking is to underline died to sin. died to sin. If you were not paying close attention, you would think that sin died. 
That's not the case. And in fact, sin is not the real issue. The real issue, as far as we're concerned, is our response or our re reaction to it. Sin still lives. We, got, we, we just got to die to it. it it's still there. We just got to, you know, turn our back. All right. We're not friends anymore. You ever had a friend that you're not friends with anymore? You don't, you don't listen to anymore? You don't talk to for hours anymore? We're not committed to sin anymore? And the problem with all of that is that uh, the same sin that we have disavowed, the same sin that we are dead to, still hangs around. We see them coming, uh, and, and we, we don't want to talk to them, but they're coming. And we got to deal with it whether we want to deal with it or not. You heard it. We are forced we are freed from sin, but sin is still alive. Uh, see, we, we, we got this sin nature that we were born with and that uh, will be there until we have a glorified body. Listen to me carefully now. This is scary, and, and, and it's easy to miss. Uh, uh, we have decided, I have decided to be dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. So even though sin is still alive down in us, we don't obey it, and it's lust. I hear somebody saying, that's easier said than done. How we do that? Now, this is meat now. It's an act of our will. We make ourselves available to God and righteousness. And we make ourselves unavailable to sin and unrighteousness. And if we do that, God has committed to helping us. We are talking this morning in Sunday school about the fact that uh, 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 God helped uh, 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 Joshua. But Joshua still had to fight. You see? And God don't help you if you won't do nothing. See, we, we want God to do it for us. God has committed to helping us. Uh, the way we are made and the way and, and, and the contradicting natures that we have within us are why we struggle. You ever see yourself or hear yourself saying something that you didn't want to say or you see yourself doing something that you, you didn't want to do and it seems like it's hard to stop you? If you heard my testimony, you know that before I repented and, and surrendered my life to God, before I, uh, I gave in to him, I didn't like myself. But it seemed like I couldn't help it. One of the most important things that my salvation has done for me is to help me to be the kind of person that I can stand. I don't know how other folk feel about it. They, 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 may, they may not still be able to stand me, but uh, it helped me to be the kind of person that I can stand. I, I remember the cartoons in the old days uh, uh, where they had an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other shoulder, and they both talking to you. We don't have nothing on our shoulder, but down in our soul. It causes us to struggle. Uh, look at chapter 7 as Paul tries to explain it. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to ask you to confess to it now or not, but, but all of us have our, our, our portion of evil desires. Somebody said urges. We may not, we may not all acknowledge it, uh, that, that we have them, but uh, we were born with them. We don't want them. We don't like them. 
But in every case, they're there. And maybe you're better than me, but I, I, I catch myself sometimes seemingly uh, out of nowhere uh, having evil thoughts. I, I, stop thinking that. Uh -huh. Evil desires. Hmm. Paul said, I, I keep my body under subjection daily. Yeah. Yeah. At least I sin against God. Hmm. Chapter 7, verse 9 says, uh, I, I was alive once without the law, but when the commandment came, Sin revived and I died. He said, and, and, and this is a section that, of the Bible that when I read it it, it, it shook my foundation and scared me. Paul is looking into his very soul and, and telling us uh, what he sees there, and it frustrates him and it scares him. Yeah. And he knows that, that there's a, a danger there within him to, to, to defeat who he is in Christ. And I, I know you haven't experienced this, but it's a wrestling match between his mindset and his lifestyle. The fact that he has given his life to God and committed his heart to living the, uh, the God kind of life is a direct opposition to the sinful desires that sometimes rise up in his soul. We see Paul in, in, in the seventh chapter losing the battle and, and crying out for help. Uh, uh, who shall deliver me from the, uh, the body of this death? I, I know you don't want to admit that, but I think all of us have been there. I can remember praying to God and promising all kind of stuff. And then out of nowhere... Fall them flat on my face and being ashamed to pray again. That's, that's a struggle. And that's miserable for someone who, who loves God and, and is serious about his faith and, uh, and, and committed to God. And I know we don't talk much about it, uh, uh, about our failures, but if we don't uh, admit our failures, uh, we will never uh, find the true victory. If we keep acting like we're perfect when we're not, we're never going to get better. And I'm not talking about the, the difficulty that we, that we face when we uh, live in a fallen world, because everybody who lives in this world is going to have some struggles with just, just, just living. You know the passage, man that's born over a woman that's over a few days and full of trouble. When God created us, he, uh, he placed us in Eden and, 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 and almost a perfect world. And we had everything we needed, and th there was no trials there. There was no hardships there, no struggle there. Uh, we had to do, all we had to do was obey God. Yeah, yeah. But he did allow us to be tested. Satan was there in, in the form of a serpent, and he, he challenged the instructions God gave us. Eve was deceived, and Adam went along with her. And from that time on, those who lived on this earth have had to struggle. That's where our, our, our problematic natures come from, because we were born with them, because we're, uh, we're descendants of Adam and Eve. The difficulty that we have in survival begin there, but this is more than that. This struggle is not about outside stuff. This is a struggle about who we are. And, and let me explain something to you that, 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 that many church folk get, get all mixed up on. Uh, Christianity, uh, being in the family of God, being born again, having a personal relationship with God is not about what you have or haven't done. It's not about basically your behavior. Not totally anyway. It's not about our do's or as much as it is about our who's. It's about who we are. See, the, the only way to get yourself to act right is to change who you are. As long as you, uh, you, you can't act right to be somebody else, you got to be somebody else to act right. <laughs> huh? 
I said, you can't be somebody else. Uh, uh, you, you can't act right because, to be somebody else. You got to be somebody else to act right. And a lot of us act like we act because of who we are. God changes who we are. He remakes our mind, our thinking, our feeling. Remember what the angel told Jacob? No longer will you be Jacob. That's not who you are anymore. You're not going to be Israel. Uh, Jacob had some struggles uh, uh, with his old self, but he was a new man now. And God gives us a new nature. And, and, and now, uh, unfortunately, that old nature, don't, you, you can't kill it until you just get out of the body, but he gives us a new nature. As we grow up in faith, we get closer and closer to Christ, and we begin to look more and more like him. And in a few weeks, we're going to have Father's Day. And if God is your father, you will naturally favor him. And we've talked about the fact that we struggle, and, and, and we talked about uh, why we struggle. I, I want to close with just a little about how we overcome how we win. The solution is, the key is through Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus paid the price for our salvation. We are saved from the penalty of sin by his death on the cross, the fact that he died for us. He took our place with his death and condemnation. He took our place on the cross and we take his place before God. But then that necessitates him leaving here. And when Jesus got up from the grave, he, uh, he stayed a little while, but he said, you know what, I'm going back to where I came from. And, and that was a good thing because if he had stayed here, he said, it's good for you that I leave. Because if I don't leave, the, uh, the Holy Ghost can't come. And he says, you know what, I, I can't be with all y'all at the same time. But the spirit of truth can. Then he said, if I go, I will petition, I'll ask the Father, and he will send another comforter. Uh, you see, when, when trouble came while Jesus was here, he always bailed them out. Uh, when, when those at the wedding were, were thirsty, uh, he turned water to wine. Uh, when the multitude was hungry, he fed them with uh, uh, two fish and uh, they called them loaves, but five barley biscuits. He let them know that they were going to keep on having struggles outside and inside. And that's when he told them that they were going to need another comforter. Listen to me now. Just because you turn on the stream every Sunday morning, and just because you show up here on a regular basis does not mean that you won't have any struggles. In fact, some of your struggles will be because you re repented and, and trusted Christ as your Savior. And God changed who you are and, and, and that other person is still there too. That's why when Jesus got back to glory, he petitioned the Father and God sent the Holy Spirit not to be with us. but to be in us. And that's where the power comes from. Too many of us have, have, have discounted the Holy Ghost as hokey. And only part of that other denomination. And too many of us have, uh, we see the Holy Ghost only as something that uh, makes you shout when the music is good. And some folk think that the Holy Ghost is all about speaking in tongues and, and prophesying. Jesus called him power from on high. Jesus called him wisdom when you don't know what to do. And the Bible calls him God's earnest. I, I know God's serious about saving me by the earnest. Uh, he lets us know that, that God is serious about saving us. 
and, and keeping us and delivering us. So the power of the Holy Spirit is the secret to our victory and our struggle with ourselves. Huh? If you ask for help, it's there. Uh, the, the world will try to condemn you because you messed up along the way. The church will try to condemn you because you fell short. Because your behavior wasn't perfect. Because you got pinned for a while in your struggle. But in Romans 8, uh, it counters that. Maybe seven, I don't know. He said, listen to what it says. He says, there is therefore now uh, since Jesus died on the cross for our sins, since he, uh, he was righteous, uh, uh, since he was holy, uh, we're given credit for being righteous and holy. And there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Don't, don't let nobody condemn you. The Holy Spirit can keep you. You, you know, sometimes uh, my mother would tell my big brother, you go with him so he won't get in trouble. <laughs> the Holy Spirit can keep you out of trouble if you listen. Verse number five instructs us to set our minds. Is your mind set? And not on the things of the flesh, but on the things of the spirit. Uh, your lifestyle, your success or failure, and your struggle depends on your mindset. You used to hear the old folks say, I got a made up mind. And I'm so glad that God changed my mindset. I, I used to not care. What, you know. The songwriter said, my mind is made up. I'm not there, but I'm on my way up. I have become, and you can become, if you're not saved, a joint heir with Christ. That's where the victory is. Christ has already won the victory. All we got to do is get on his team, and we win too. The Holy Spirit helps our weakness and even gives us what we pray for, tells us what to pray for. Glenn, we are predestined, and right now we are being transformed and conformed into the image of Christ Jesus. I, I haven't made it quite there yet, but I'm, I, I'm, going, I'm changing that way. Uh, we have the victory even before our struggle begins. Satan wants to separate us from God. Satan wants to look at our offenses and condemn us, but God is for us. And when you feel like the whole world is against you, the Holy Spirit reminds you that God is for you. And when God is for you, who can be against you? God allowed them to nail Jesus to the cross so that we could be free. God is for us. And we, uh, we're more than conquerors through him. He loves us. Paul closes this chapter with these words. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing out there, nothing in there can separate us from the love of God. Uh, we were talking about my youngest son. My wife's talking about, you know, he, he, I don't know what he said or did, but he already sang and doing something. And, and, and we agreed that, you know, he's he a mess. <laughs> but I said, you know what, he, he's our mess. I might be, I'm God's mess. 
And I'm not separated because I, 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 I struggle sometimes. I'm, I'm still God's. Isn't that great? Thank you, Lord. Neither height, nor death, nor bad attitude. All that can separate us. So we may struggle, and we have to struggle. And the point is, don't give up. Fight the good fight of faith. Hang in there. If you fall, get up. If you lose your grip, grip again. Stay close to God. He'll stay close to you. Father God, we thank you that even through our struggles, you love us. Keep on transforming us. Keep on remaking us. Keep on, dear Lord, developing us that we may be an honor to your word. Bless your people, dear Lord, to understand who we are and how we are. And even though none of us are, are there yet, Lord, we're on our way. Someone who came in discouraged for the fight. Someone who, who tuned in, dear Lord, are ready to hang up and say, you know what, I, I just give in to it. I, I pray that they are encouraged, Lord, to struggle on and to keep the faith. We thank you for it and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. You ought to make a decision. Your, your mind ought to be made up. And if your mind is not made up yet, make it up now. To trust Christ as your Savior. To be who he called you to be. And if you are who he called you to be, soon you'll be how he called you to be. As they sing this song, you ought to Make your commitment. Take it from the top. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I implore thee, I implore, drench my heart, drench my heart, my lips, as my lips part your grave. Come on, say, I am persuaded, everybody. By his great, by this great God's 
forever. Forever to us shall be. Forever got the worst. Thank you, thank you. Amen. You know, I, I've been watching the NBA finals and uh, not the finals, but the playoffs. And uh, part of the game is defense. And sometime when you guard somebody, sometime when you guard somebody, you slip and fall, and they get away. And, and sometimes as Christian people, we may slip and fall. But a, a good defensive person is, is scaring to get back where they belong. And the problem we have is uh, oh, we don't always scare you to get back. Sometimes we fall and we lay there. Or somebody ought to be scaring to get back up and, and scaring to get back on their man or, or get back where God placed them. Amen? First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 reads, For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This is about a, a remembrance of what Christ has done. This is not a, 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 a testimony to how good I've been but what Christ has done. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. One scripture said that uh, I died with him. And since I died with him, I'm resurrected with him. So my Christian life is, 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 is built and, and banked on what he did. Uh, uh, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let uh, a man examine himself, women too, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. But this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, that means you ain't acting like you ain't, you ain't struggling. You see, when I look at myself in the mirror, my nose is dirty, my nose is dirty. But this cause many are weak and weak among you. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged, but when we are judged, huh? we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry for one another. If any man hunger, let him eat at home, that, that ye may not come together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Father God, we pray for this bread and for this wine. We thank you, Lord, for what you did. We remember your death, your burial, and your resurrection. We remember, Father, that your body was broken for us. And Father, we, we, we're united with, with, with your son, Jesus. We, uh, we're part of him, and he's part of us, Lord, and that's the key to our salvation. And even though we've struggled, Lord, we appreciate how you forgive us, how you deliver us yes. into glory. Bless it, Father, and bless those who receive it. Let us eat and drink. What can wash away my
the blood. I know it's blood. It was my Savior's blood. Pray your blessing on your people. Love. We pray your strength when we're weak. We pray your forgiveness, love. Father, when we fail. We I pray, Father, the power of the Holy Spirit for us to live like He calls us to live. We pray, Father, for deliverance from uh, the hardships and the things One that we go through in this nation. And Father, we pray for answers for our, our problems and our questions. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit I know it rest and the Bible with you. His fourth and forevermore. Amen. Thank God.